Alexei Navalny. He had many titles, Putin critic, Russian opposition leader, poisoned activist, but there's one that stuck, the man with many lives. That's what he was called. He ran out of them today. Alexei Navalny has died. He was in a prison in the Arctic Circle. We still don't know the exact reasons or circumstances of his death. Kremlin was asked about it. It says it has no information about the cause and that it's up to the medics to clarify. As far as we know, currently, in accordance with all existing rules, everyone is engaged in all checks, clarifications and so on. That is, there is no need for any special instructions because there is a certain set of rules that everyone is now following. So Kremlin does not know how he died, but there have been a few reports. They all say the same thing. He was out on a walk in the prison yard. That's when he fell ill, and soon after he fell to the ground, medical staff were informed. They spent half an hour trying to resuscitate him, but they failed, after he d and he died soon after. So basically, Navalny died from previous complications. That's the Russian version. But there's a video that's now doing the rounds. It's from the 15th of February, which is yesterday. In this video, you can see Alexei Navalny. He was appearing for a hearing. Your Honor, I will send you my personal account number so that you can use your huge federal judge's salary to fuel my personal account because I am running out of money. And thanks to your decisions, it will run out even faster. So send it over. He seemed perfectly healthy yesterday, and today he is dead. How did that happen? It's the question that the world is asking. Russia says it's complications. Russian critics are not buying it, though. The US says Russia is responsible. Ukraine says Putin killed Navalny. Spain has demanded clarification. The EU says Putin fears nothing more than dissent. And NATO says Russia has some serious questions to answer. Russia is responsible for this. We'll be talking to many other countries concerned about Alexei Navalny, uh, especially if these reports bear out to be true. I am deeply saddened and uh, concerned about the reports um, coming from Russia that uh, Alexei Navalny is dead. All the facts has to be established and uh, Russia has serious uh, questions uh, to answer. Putin's Russia imprisoned him, trumped up charges against him, poisoned him, sent him to a Arctic penal colony, and now he's tragically died. Alexei Navalny has died in a Russian prison. It is obvious that he was killed by Russian President Vladimir Putin, as thousands of others, tormented and tortured because of this one creature. Multiple statements, but the same sentiment. They say Navalny did not die and that he was murdered by Russia. What about his family? His wife was at the Munich Security Conference when the news broke. She still got up on the stage. She was given a standing ovation. And this is what she had to say. You have all probably seen the terrible news coming in today. I thought for a long time whether I should come out here or fly straight to my children. But then I thought about what my husband would do in my place, and I'm sure he'd be here. He'd be on the stage. So who exactly is Alexei Navalny? How did he rise to prominence? And why was he called Putin's biggest foe? Navalny was born in 1976 in Butin. It's a village located just west of Moscow. His mother owned a factory. His father was a Soviet army officer. And that's what set him apart. Navalny was not like other opposition figures in Russia. He wasn't an oligarch. He wasn't a Soviet official. He wasn't from an ethnic minority. His ancestors once fought for the Red Army. He was born and brought up in Russia. He studied there. He worked there. He married there. His wife was Russian. Everything about him was so inherently Russian that he captured the public sentiment. It was difficult to make him look like an outsider force, to paint him as a Western agent. His political career began in the year 2000. Navalny joined the Russian United Democratic Party. In 2001, he was listed as a party member. By 2004, he was deputy chief of the Moscow branch. But in 2007, he was expelled from the party. Why? Because he demanded the chairman's resignation, so he was thrown out. But Navalny did not give up. In 2007, he launched the National Russian Liberation Movement. 
but it was in 2008 that he became a household name. He exposed corruption in state-run corporations. By 2012, Navalny was arrested. It would be the first of his many arrests. The same year, he rallied thousands of supporters, all protesting against Putin. He called Putin's party a party of crooks and tugs. In 2013, he ran for the mayor of Moscow. He came second with 27% of the vote. He was under house arrest for two years. He was attacked with a die. It caused some eye damage, but it wasn't the only attack he would endure. In 2020, Navalny traveled to Siberia. It was to shoot a video on corruption. On the flight back to Moscow, he felt weird. He was dizzy. Soon he collapsed in the plane. The plane made an emergency landing. Navalny was rushed to hospital, but public pressure was mounting. Germany tried to evacuate him and Russia relented. So he was moved to Berlin. The medical diagnosis then said he was poisoned by a nerve agent called Novichok. Alexei Navalny wurde Opfer eines Angriffs mit einem chemischen Nervenkampfstoff der Novichok Gruppe. Dieses Gift lässt sich zweifelsfrei in den Proben nachweisen. Reports said Russian intelligence had poisoned him. Navalny himself carried out a sting, but Putin denied all of this. Russia was sanctioned. There was widespread condemnation. But even after the poisoning, Navalny did not give up. He recovered in Germany, but he could not stay away. So in 2021, he made a shocking announcement. He was going to return to Russia. Minutes after he landed, he was arrested and sentenced to 19 years in jail. Since then, he'd been in prison. Last December, his team said they lost contact with him. They did not know where he was. Weeks later, he was tracked to a prison in the Arctic Circle, thousands of kilometers away from Moscow. He has appeared for hearings from there, the last one being yesterday. But today, the man who was known as Putin's fiercest critic is dead. Navalny had long resisted the label of dissident. Yet today, he died as one.